everyone, welcome back to Rolling Solo. My name is Adam Smith, and today I'm excited to be unboxing a game called Deep Rock Galactic Danger, Darkness, and Dwarves. This comes from a video game which has now been adapted for the tabletop. This is a very, very deep box. It's a regular square in terms of size, will fit on a calic shelf, no problem, but it certainly is deep. And we're going to dive inside this thing, show you everything you can find inside the box. Just to let you know, this is the collector's edition, so this came from the campaign which ran in the past. And within the 24 hour window, there also came a coin, which is stickered on the front of the box. Flipping this over to the opposite side, we'll take a look at what this game has for us and what it's all about, and then check out those components inside. Great news, miners. We're sending you down into the caves of Hoxus IV, a planet of untold riches, priceless fossils, and mysterious surprises. It won't be a cakewalk, however. The caves of Hoxus are inhabited by an untold legions of the most voracious aliens this side of Alpha Centauri. And as if that wasn't enough, the very planet itself seems to conspire against our efforts. You'll need to stay on your toes if you intend to get through this with your limbs and team intact. But management assures me that it will all be worth it if you survive. Good luck down there. When you first crack open this massively deep box, you're going to run into the mission book on the left and the rule book on the right. The rule book is around 40 pages. You have an index on the right hand side of all the different aspects of this book and you have a letter from management to read on the left. Here's a look at the components inside the rule book so you can ensure you have everything that comes in the box all labeled out and then of course you have the map set up and the game set up overall walking you through those steps and then you get into the mission setup itself and the main things you're doing here are selecting a mission you're going over your objectives your hazard levels being set in terms of the danger and then you've got some flare symbols pick up tokens and other things it starts getting into the player setup for the dashboards which we'll see those dashboards in a little bit and the turn order where you move attack use your pickaxe throw things you can overclock a secondary weapon you can resupply exchange supplies assist revive and play rock and stone cards for free and here's the final page of the rulebook that i'll show this gives you a great idea as to the format and how it's laid out things are broken out in actions by different sections so if you want to learn how to move you've got a page on that page for attacking and so on as you can see, if you want to play the solo mode, you'll want to jump to page 32. After you understand how the game flows and operates, it will tell you what things to tweak based on how you want to play. In solo mode, you can choose to play with one dwarf and Bosco, or you can control multiple dwarves as if you were playing a multiplayer game. So you have the ability to go either way. And of course, there's minor rule adjustments for each way. Here's a quick look inside the mission booklet. This is going to tell you what the mission booklet's all about, the definitions, the map setup, and then it starts getting into some of the components and major elements you need to understand in terms of them being labeled out. It's worth mentioning beyond the prescribed missions inside the booklet, towards the end, around page 33, you'll see random missions where you can set up completely random ones in order to kind of go on an exploration on your own to see how things pan out. You have the ability to do this, and it gives you guidelines around how to make it happen. Now let's move into the punch boards because that's the next major component that we're pulling out of the box. We unwrapped it and the very top is a full reference for the hostile creatures on both sides. It's dual sided and yes, this is not paper thin. This is actually like a punch board in and of itself. You'll see it's quite thick. Flipping it over to the opposite side, you have more hostile creatures from this universe. And then we get into the punch boards which have all the terrain laid out on them. So we'll just flip these over and show you opposite sides. You'll see there's differences in terms of what's illustrated on both of them and you've got iconography for different types of conditions and effects that are going to happen within the gameplay as well as we go along. There's quite a few of these because, well, this is going to be a game of discovery and lots of randomness in terms of what you find and when you find it, which kind of makes the whole game quite exciting. So as we continue through here, you'll see at the very end, we've got some uh, major weapons or utilities we can actually use in order to help us drill down deeper. Here's a look at the game board itself. You see all the different hexes all around where we're going to be placing the terrain as you play through the game. You have tracks along the bottom here and also spaces up top for decks of cards. And just so you can see the illustrations and artwork and the iconography I zoomed in a little bit here on the left and we'll take a look at the right as well. One of the nice things that I like about this particular board is the fact that the background here of the hexes is black. So once we actually have terrain on the game board while we're playing, it's going to pop off the table. Here's a look at the player dashboards. I'm going to tell you right out of the gates, the second I saw these things, they're colorful, vibrant, and I love the fact they've got these recessed areas all over the place. The whole entire board is full of it, so you can actually have things housed inside of it, not worry about things moving around, which is awesome. They also just look great. I'm going to give you some close-up shots of the artwork as well. On the left-hand side here, you'll see this individual, the gunner, has the powered minigun as the primary weapon. Over here, the scout has the M1000 Classic. 
The engineer is going to come along with a grenade launcher as a primary weapon. The driller has a flamethrower. You're also going to notice there are dice that are listed here. There's also special abilities that are special and unique to each of these characters. And you're going to see these large, large recessed areas here for secondary weapons for cars to be slotted in, in the future, among a number of other spots. This game knows that you have miniatures and many components inside, and it does a great job of giving you storage in order to house everything. On top of it, you'll see here, as I took the lid off, it's got a actual lid, which will keep these components in place with the logo for Deep Rock on top. Got all kinds of really nice components in here, which I'm gonna show you up close as well. The final compartments in the game box at the very bottom after removing plastic covers are the miniatures. I'm going to go ahead and show you every unique sculpt that's inside this box. You won't see every single one repeated for the ones where there's multiples of them, but it'll give you a great idea as to all the different types of miniatures you can expect to find in this box.
And that, my friends, is going to wrap up the game unboxing video for Deep Rock Galactic. I hope this gives you a great idea as to what you can expect to find inside the core box for this one. Thank you guys. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of it and what your first impressions are. And as always, keep on rolling solo.